Hi, it's me, Brooke Harkey, leaving my house for the first time in three days. I've just been on an unsuccessful mission to get a backup camera battery. Now I'm walking home and I thought, let's walk and talk, baby. I recently got a toolbox organizer thingy and it has changed my life. And I thought, while it's all clean and organized, I thought I would explain all my tools and what I use them for and any tips and tricks that I have on using them. Have fun. Hello, here is my toolbox. So we're going to start with the top drawers. Nothing special. I have a whole bunch of bobby pins organized by color and then some U pins or French pins or whatever they're called. Then I have all my different clips. I will never ever run out of these dark wheel clips. And then, bonus, I found the extra black clip that I have been missing for a little while now. Then I have all my different scissors. You need multiple different pairs of scissors for anything in here. Thinning shears, all purpose scissors, hair cutting scissors, and pliers, cause why not? Then next up in these drawers, I've got a few little accessories that I throw into styles every now and again. And then hair ties, zip ties, and this is all my spare pins. I know that seems excessive and this looks a little crazy, but you never know when you're gonna be holding something together and you just need a pin in a pinch. So I keep it, keep them all in there. <laughs> And then the next drawer we have like a miscellaneous thing, so anything to do with sewing in wefts, needles, threads, these curved needles as well. This kind of holds the hair out of the way when you're ventilating. I've got a ventilation needle as well. I have a, what is this? A de-stitcher? What is it? Unstitcher? Stitch picker? Something like that. If you're removing any stitching from like wefts and stuff like that. I have a model of my nose, different tapes, so tape measures, and then things, ribbons to block my lace down, and different shoelaces, which I use sometimes to shape the hair before I blast it with hairspray. Plus also, I've got some tweezers in here as well for plucking the hairline. I have an empty bonus drawer. I haven't really decided what I'm gonna do with that. Maybe I can use that as a working surface if I'm ever on the go, I don't know. And then I have in here all of my brushes, my paddle brush, and then a series of round brushes that you can use to add a little bit of curl into the hair, especially like those 60 flip kind of styles. I've got a bunch of different teasing brushes. I keep more than one on hand because sometimes I teach lessons. I've got a couple of rat tail combs, my afro pick, everything has hair on it. Another teasing brush, a smoothing brush, and I have, I have these, they're finger wave combs, so you can dig them in and then create finger waves on shorter hair with those. I haven't actually used them yet, but I saw them online and I had to buy them. Why not? And then I have this little loop-de-doo. I don't know what it's called, but you use it to basically pull hair through a tight closure or something. So if you've got hair up in a ponytail, you can wrap it around and then pull through. And that way you disguise the hair tie. Cool. And then we get into the lower drawers. So on top, I've got all my sprays and adhesives, a bunch of different glues, a lot of Gorilla Glue E6000, and some root sprays as well. So if you're ever trying to blend two different colors into one, if you've got a double stack or something, you might find that a little bit of root spray can help cover it up if they're not exactly the same color wig. My spray water is there too. Then I have all my hot tools. I've got a whole bunch of curling irons. I've got this, it's like, how do I describe it? It's like a hairdryer and a hairbrush in one. It blows out hot air. It's a bit gunky, but it blows out hot air and you can brush the hair at the same time. I find this is particularly useful for laying like 
human hair down. It's a little less damaging than a hot comb. Different size rollers, or not rollers, different size hair curlers. Um, all of that fun stuff. I have a hair straightener, of course, and then a hair crimper. I bought this actually for synthetic hair, but I find that the crimping before teasing doesn't make a tangible difference and it's not really worth the extra effort. Next is miscellaneous hair products. I've got this curl flex thing from Tresemme, just from Woolies, that you can use to define your curls in your human hair a lot better. And it is also frizz control. Then I have this lace melting spray. I don't use it because it's a waste of time. I have some oil, Vaseline, heat protectant spray, backup can of hairspray times three. Then just below that, I keep all of my perm rollers or perming rods. I have four different sizes. So like I've got these pretty small ones, which get a really tight curl. And then also I have these like jumbo ones here. They are useful for curling a wig when the curl pattern doesn't really matter so much. So let, let's say an updo where it's all pulled back and you need to go from straight to curly hair. It's just a lot more convenient to do it in, let's say 10 of these, as opposed to 25, 30 different rollers. And because the hair's all being pulled back, it doesn't really matter what direction the hair is curled in anyway. Plus I've got my stocking cuts. I use as reusable end papers. You just wrap the ends of the hair in that before rolling it up around the rod. And then finally, I have this sort of junk drawer almost. It's full of the curling tools that I don't really use very often. These Velcro rollers, they're too big. And they give the hair a nice flick at the end, but it doesn't really do much other than that. And then I've got these spiral perm thingies that I saw on TikTok and I bought them. And they're honestly just, not, it's not a popular curl pattern, the spiral curl. And also you have to feed the hair through this and it just, it's too much effort and I can't really be bothered, to be honest. Don't waste your money on that. I also have chuck swipes in there and I didn't show you, but actually on the top, the very, very top, I have in here cleaning supplies. So I've got stuff to clean lace with, including a toothbrush and extra isopropyl alcohol and Pino Clean wipes. A good trick is with Pino Clean wipes, you can, if you're lazy like me, you don't have to rewrap your wig blocks so often because they get covered in hairspray or whatever. If you just give them a wipe between uses, before you put on a new wig and pin it to the wig block, you wipe the glad wrap that you've protected the wig block with, you wipe it down with Pino Clean wipe, and then you don't have to clean it as often. Or like you don't have to rewrap it later. Anyway. Now that's not the full extent of all of my things. I do also have that. And then there's another one over there full of more tools and things like that. So I am just going to show you those ones, I guess. Okay, starting off at the very top, we have um, fiberglass, randomly enough. Um, that is for creating structure within certain wigs. Like you can incorporate some epoxy resin into your structured wigs and then the fiberglass will help it keep its shape. I have balloons, just in case you want to. I should be wearing a mask with this fiberglass. I have balloons in case I want to create fun shapes with hair and then stick them to the balloon and then pop the balloon. I have gloves, I have silicon mats because nothing really sticks to silicon. And I also have, I use these as little mixing knives. They are just wooden cutlery from Coles, but I use it when I'm mixing certain glues and things together. 
This is where I keep most of my rollers that I use. So you've got like the three normal sizes here. And I've taken the Velcro off of most of them because the Velcro I find just doesn't, it doesn't, it harms more than it helps with the stick. Like when you are wrapping the hair and it's not on your head and you're pinning it in, you don't need the Velcro to hold it in because you can pin it into the wig block. But I do have a few that still have the Velcro on them and that's for things like bangs where the hair is a bit shorter and you can't tuck it under. Always useful to have at least a few with the Velcro still on them. It looks like I've got another wig pick here and there's some hair in there as well. So that's fine. I'm gonna put this with the other combs and whatnot. This one is empty, this one is empty. This one is empty. In here, I keep my steamer. I use the oven steamer from Kmart, I think I got it from. It is just so much more efficient than using a clothes steamer or a garment steamer because it just, it, it's 10 times more powerful and it does the job so much quicker. There's also all these different heads and attachments and things like that. I don't really use them. I just use the window one, but I have taken off the wipey protector bit. I don't know. And then down here, I have my extra long jumbo braid hair. So sometimes you use this as like padding for like a beehive, let's say, or you might use it as a braid if you want to add some extra length, you can braid it into your wig. I've got basic colors. So I've got the Frenchy pink and I've got white, which I can dye to any color and blonde. And I think this is over a meter long. I don't know. Excellent. Then we're gonna come over to this side here. Okay. Up here, it's a bit of a mess, but I have my extensions. Whenever I want to add vibrant color into a wig, instead of dyeing, I can cut up these extensions, little cheap clip-in extensions, and then hand tie them into the lace or add them in or whatever. But if I'm adding quite a lot, I will use this white hair that I bought in wefts and I will dye that to match or dye it to whatever color I want and then sew it into the wig. So I have all these fun crazy colors that I use sometimes to customize different wigs. Then I have a tub full of quote unquote toppers. Basically these are just wigs that I already stock but in a shorter length that I can just cut the lace off and then tease it up and then it's a, an updo topper. So I've got those in blonde, I've got them in pink and it looks like that's all I have for now. The next two tubs are dedicated to just clients' wigs of mine and assorted wigs that I have plans for, for later styling ventures. And then I have offcuts. I don't know why, I'm a bit of a hoarder, but I have, whenever I have to cut the lace off of a wig, I keep the hair. I don't know, I think it'd be fun to make like maybe a dress out of all these like frontals or you never know, you might need to replace the frontal of a wig at some point, I don't know. But this is all bonus hair. Plus also you can use this hair or reuse this hair if you want to cut it off and then if you want like a grey streak in a wig with tinsel then you can hand tie this to the new wig, that kind of thing. So I am hanging on to it for a reason, I promise. I'm not just a crazy person. Then we have some more braiding hair or filler hair. You can use these for those pom wigs, which is what I have done before. Or like I said, you can tease it up and make it into padding for any other styles that need a bit more support or under structure. If there's more braiding here in there. The next one I have in here, there's just some paper towels and some paper cups. I use them 
to hold things temporarily if I'm using a bunch of pins in a style and I can't be bothered organizing them I'll just chuck them in one of these or if I'm mixing liquids they go in paper cups and then lastly I've got all my chemicals so there's acetone in here I've got silicon I've got modeling clay I've got resin I've got a UV torch to cure some UV resin I go on these wild goose chases of chemicals and whatnot I literally even have matte clear coat for a car if you can think of a chemical, I probably have it here in this house. Awesome, okay. Okay, and then next we come to this wall. I should adjust the camera. Okay, and then next we come to this wall. I store all of my wig blocks here, and then up on the top of this shelf, I have some mannequin head displays as well for taking pretty photos and whatnot. This is a mess and there's no rhyme or reason to a lot of the organizing here but I have a bunch of stickers, tapes and whatnot for packaging up wigs in their boxes, camera supplies and then I have things like bingo sheets and a tub exclusively dedicated to just lashes. I buy all my lashes online and in bulk and honestly I've never looked back. Then I have all of my synthetic dyes, plus my dye cloth, which has seen better days. So this is how I color match my hair if I need something dyed or if I want a certain color of a streak or something. I will use Rit Dye More and that's how I color my synthetic hair. I also have this remover as well in case you need to make it less intense but generally I'm too lazy to do that so I'll just re-dye a second batch because it saves more time. In here I have things like elastic string that you can use to further secure a ponytail, I've got spare hair nets, I've got the elastic string in blonde and black and then I have my towels down here when I'm steaming. I don't like it when there is water on my like hardwood floors. So I put down a towel. They are dirty floor towels. That's empty. Here are spare bags that I put some wigs in sometimes. Here I've got a bunch of different little apparatuses. They're, they're wig styling stands, but they're the mini ones. So travel friendly but I find that I will more often than not use these wig block holders because they clip onto a table and you can work on it as opposed to this little tripod that will go anywhere. These suction cups are not suction cups, they don't work. But I obviously, I prefer to use my tripod over this because you've got more movement. You can actually circle the wig, but with this, obviously it's pointed, it's pin pointed to a table. It's locked onto a table. Also in here, I have this like magnifying glass ring light situation. I use that when I am ventilating some new hair into a wig because that shit's hard to see and I want to save my eyeballs. Here I keep my bag for when I'm steaming. These, what are they? Plastic Woolies bags or whatever. Obviously they're all paper now and so this bag is very important. It will one day be the most uh, precious thing that I own. And then we have in here various different shapes fun shapes. So I've got cones, I've got bigger cones, I've got balls, I've got wire, I've got a hoop. You never know when you're going to need something fun to model hair onto or to use the shape of or whatever. That's the point behind that. And then that's it. We can talk about my tripod as well. I have a great tripod. Just search wig making or hairdressing tripod or something. It's got these little stabilizer things. If you have got like a small flimsy tripod or whatever, the struggle of styling and then it tilts over. So you can stand on these stabilization legs 
to stop it from doing that. And this one's quite heavy duty, so it doesn't really budge too much, which is a bonus. I've also put a bit of tape around the thing here because the Krylon brand canvas wig block, this is the one that I use for my updos. The reason for that is because it's shaped more accurately to a head and so it'll fit better. It's the pole mount is slightly too big and so when I'm pulling the hair up into an updo, it's like wobbling around. But now that I've got the tape, if it's on, she's not moving around, uh, which is good. What else? I think that's it, honestly. That's the whole thing. That's the whole tour. I hope I did it justice explaining what everything is for. And if you have any questions, sound off in the comments below. I don't know. The last thing I haven't mentioned is I hang my hair dryer up on the wall because it's basically, it's obviously it just stays plugged in 24 seven. And I don't like having it on the table all the time. Cause I also use this table here to paint when I'm getting ready for gigs. So I'm in the habit of just clearing it completely out between different uses. I think that's it. I think that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye. Oh, that's not off. Hang on.